Hi everyone, this is Neil Reisert here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have a very interesting and complex case here. And in a minute on screen, you're going to see the patient's email inquiries. So feel free to pause or rewind. But uh, this patient contacted us this morning in the early hours by email. Um, they were up all night because they're experiencing severe ultalgia earache in this, their right ear. And yesterday they had visited a specialist local to them uh, in an attempt to remove this and they were unsuccessful. And although it doesn't state in the email, uh, the patient advised me when they attended today on an emergency appointment that prior to yesterday's attempt, they also had seen, um, I think, three other specialists. So in total, I was the, the fifth attempt at removing this this wax. And they were told by the specialist yesterday that the wax was really hard and oxidised, which it was. It was really impacted. And it was a complex case. Um, uh, and it was made more complex because as you probably read in the patient's email inquiry, um, they were experiencing severe earache, a lot of discomfort, and in part that's because this patient had been using cotton buds. They, they, they're they fully aware now after watching my videos all last night that you should avoid that. So what's happened is this wax plug is completely impacted and squashed deep into the ear, right up against the eardrum, and the ear canal itself has swollen and engulfed this wax plug. It may not be visible at the moment, but as I start to remove this, uh, you will see it. Um, upon attending, the patient was extremely anxious. They were, uh, they saw me as their last hope, really, so there was no pressure. And they, although they read a lot about me and seen a lot of my work, they were, they were, they were unsure whether I'd be able to remove this. Um, so the patient had been taking paracetamols, I think, I think they said every hour. I'm not sure what the recommended dosage is, but I think that's what they mentioned. And so when they attended, the first thing we did was just to calm the patient down and get them relaxed and examine the ear, showed them the video, explained how we're going to tackle this. And I said to them, the first thing I'm going to do is, without even trying to remove the wax, I'm just going to enter the ear and just almost spar with the wax, just touch it with the suction probe, get a feel for it. It's only when you touch the wax that you can really feel how impacted it is. Um, so we did that, and then I explained that I'm going to try and chisel this, really, because it's just too impacted. And um, because it's so deep in the ear, we can't really try to get in and behind this wax plug because it will be very painful. So what I've been using was an ear pick. Um, and with the ear pick, I was trying to get around the edge, but I was careful not to be too close to the canal wall because it is inflamed and it's very painful. Instead, I just went around the edge and also in the, in the center as well, just as I am doing here. And I'm just trying to chisel it into little pieces. And when I chisel it into little pieces, you can see we're breaking it up. I can then vacuum the core of this out in the middle. And once you start vacuuming the core, what you can then do is go around the edges with the suction probe and almost fold the wax into the middle section. Um, it's not possible to do that when you've got the core of the wax there because that's providing resistance. So it's a slightly different approach and it worked really, really well. And so you can see, I'm just trying to go around the corner, probably gonna have to chisel it a little bit more, but behind this wax plug, it's, it's actually a, quite a thick wax plug. If you wait till the end, you'll see the still images but that's where all the wax is engulfed so you can't really see the swelling here at the moment so I'm just trying to take a bit more at the core I think in a moment I'm going to go to the roof of the eardrum as well so you can see I've almost hollowed out the core a little bit and I'm just going around the edges and this is where the patient was finding it slightly uh, I wouldn't say uncomfortable they were really good actually they kept asking them during the procedure, if they're okay, and at any stage, there's any discomfort, just to let us know. Unfortunately, as an audiologist um, in the UK, we're not um, able to um, directly apply any um, local anaesthetic. Now, there is some drops called clear relief drops that does contain some topical lidocaine, but that's not really going to be effective in this case. That's more if you've got a bit of water in your ear and a bit of tenderness, it'll just provide some numbness. Um, this is a lot more severe pain. So it wasn't really going to scratch the surface that those drops. So again, I'm now going just 
anterior to the front part. I'm just trying to fold it in. And in a minute, what's going to happen? We're going to peel away all this thick skin. It just started coming away. So, and it's the skin extends from the entrance all the way to the wax plug. So we're just going to get this out of the way at the moment. It did clarinet slightly, but the patient wasn't able to hear anyway. Um, they were completely um, deafening this ear. So we're just peeling it away. So even by removing that layer of skin, it is reducing the overall uh, diameter of this plug. So it will, in the end, help us to remove it. Now, this is where the main swelling was. You can probably see the canal is slightly bulging either side of that wax plug um, at the base. So I think I'm going to go back in with the ear pick. I'm just going to go to the roof. I'm going to be careful. I don't want to touch that canal wall. Again, I'm going to embed it. Now, I can't really penetrate that ear pick any further and deep in the ear um, because you're increasing the risk of potentially perforating the eardrum. I don't know where the eardrum is at the moment because we just don't know how thick this layer is. Um, and with the ear pick I'm using is stainless steel. It's quite a sharp end. So that would perforate the eardrum most definitely if the patient moves suddenly and I, I wasn't able to uh, maintain my brace. So when we're performing the procedure, I have got a brace. So if the patient does make any sudden movements, we can try and minimise that. Um, so I use my endoscope hand, which is my left hand. In fact, it's my middle finger. I'm bracing it just underneath their lobule, which is the piece of cartilage at the tip of the outside part of the ear. So it's just on the side of the cheek and just below um, the ears on the side of the neck. And that can, if the patient makes any sort of movements, that can brace and just keep the patient still. And the patient was doing brilliantly. I was um, just so worried about exacerbating uh, and adding to their pain, but uh, they said it was actually quite comfortable in the end. So again, I'm just trying to bring it out. And this is where the ear canal has had engulfed it. It was swollen to the right-hand side as well, and this plug was trapped. Um, beyond the swelling so it's as I said it's engulfing this wax plug but we are getting some movement now slowly I can feel it coming forwards and the patient themselves could feel um, less pressure as well a bit of a release of the pressure and you can see around the periphery all that fresher layer of dead skin. Now this is not Cotus's obturans. At first I was suspecting it was, but this is just earwax that has been impacted. It's been pushed in. Cotus's obturans, which is a, a, an accumulation of dead skin cells in the ear as it's shedding and it forms into a plug. Um, and that plug of dead skin gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it starts to um, forcefully um, remodel and widen the bony part of the ear canal. So it causes erosions and widenings, global widenings all the way around the periphery. Um, so that's Cotus's obturans. So it's dead skin. But this is this is dead skin as well, but 60% of earwax is also dead skin. But this is more of your traditional earwax as opposed to uh, Cotus's obturans. So it's kind of just the patient pushing it in themselves that's caused this. With a Cotus's obturans, that can ac accumulate by itself. It doesn't require the patient to, to push it in, the dead skin. Although that, that is, a, again, a potential cause of it. So, now I know some, some commentators are going to think, oh, why don't you just get in there and pull it out? Well, if I did that in your ear, you wouldn't be happy with me. And you'd probably uh, report me and, um, you know, not say some nice things about me afterwards. Um, you have to remember these are real patients with real symptoms. Um, and, you know, they, they, this patient has enormous pain. Um, I'll refer you back to their um, their email that they they'd sent, and they they sent it in desperation in the middle of the night. So, uh, for anyone that wants is wanting to book in with me, um, we can normally try and get you in the same day. If not, uh, maybe a day or two's waiting list. So, a year ago, or more than a year ago, I made the decision to stop prescribing hearing aids. Um, so, as an audiologist, my primary duty prior to last year was actually performing diagnostic hearing assessments and prescribing and um, and fitting of hearing aids but we 
just got too busy and people having to wait a week, maybe two weeks for an earwax removal appointment. And just like this patient, if you're suffering from earwax, quite often than not, patients want it removed uh, on the same days that they are experiencing, some, in some cases, really uh, severe earache, etc. So I made the decision. It was a, It's worked out really well by the time. I um, just wasn't sure um, how it would pan out. But... Um, so yeah, by not prescribing hearing aids anymore and performing, uh, I still perform diagnostic hearing tests, but because I don't prescribe hearing aids and do less of that now, it really has freed the diary because fitting hearing aids, um, I would allocate myself um, an hour and a half, a hearing consultation up to two hours, a follow-up appointment an hour. So you can imagine how much of the diary is taken up by hearing aids. And I do miss it because it's something I really enjoy doing. Um, uh, I was contemplating potentially hiring someone, but I just like taking control of my own business. I, it's, it's probably um, almost a, a negative as well because um, it is good to delegate, but I, I, when it comes to the clinical stuff, I just really like to do it myself. Um, but yeah, so um, if you do want to book in, um, give us a call, and if not the same day, within a day or two, so you don't have to wait too long. So we're beginning to see the back part of the eardrum, we use some forceps. I managed to get the ear pick on the posterior canal wall just to lift it forwards. So this is the bit you can see now, the ear canal, how swollen it is. And this is, it was hidden from view initially. I'm just going to tease this through. So this is a bit softer. Um, that more lateral layer of wax that I removed was rock solid. It was, it was like stone. This is a bit softer, so I can wriggle it through when it's softer. You know, we can tease it through smaller gaps. And we're almost there. I'm just doing it really slowly. Uh, patient was over the moon. Um, and they had travelled a fair distance as well. I think a couple of hours each way. So it's definitely a journey well made for them. So we're just going to mop this up now, but patient can hear it so much better. There is a bit of crusted dead skin just to the right of the suction probe there. I'm just going to peel that away. I just want to make sure there's no uh, formation of an external ultracanal cleshiotoma uh, or a B9 osteonecrosis. That's where the underlying bone uh, becomes exposed and eroded and then it can be infected. Um, and in the case of an external ultracanal cleshiotoma, that can spread and become quite dangerous. Uh, B9 necro. Um, um, osteitis it's somewhat less sinister but again um, can be infected and that needs again needs, it needs the appropriate treatment so I meant to say osteonecrosis there but it, it has got different terms of B9 osteitis it's got B9 osteitis what you originally called it and now I call it B9 necro uh, osteonecrosis so quite often you get multiple names so just took some wax off the eardrum there. And this is that th thick layer of skin. I'm just going to peel it away. It's crusted. It's just a fork that the, the pressure of this wax plug up against the canal. Just want to make sure there's no discharge underneath there, no ulceration, which there wasn't. The skin is obviously slightly inflamed, but it's going to settle now. So this patient has had problems with earwax many years ago as well. So... They are um, someone who suffers from wax. And I don't know if that's because the patient does use cotton buds, so they're re-instructed. Um, that's one of the number one reasons why people suffer from earwax impaction, believe it or not, is the use of cotton buds. Um, we believe that cotton buds clean the ears because when we swirl it around the ear and you take it out, you can see some wax. That's just all surface wax. That's all healthy wax. It's actually almost invisible to the naked eye if we examine the ear. That just sits on the ear canal. It protects the ear canal. So it's almost a thin veneer. And obviously when we're spinning it around the ear, you're going to um, take that away and it's going to build up, coagulate into a plug. But that's all healthy. The majority of the wax is just pushing further in. So just see how dark that wax was. Uh, pitch black. Um, some of it was rock solid as well. More the, the bits to the right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well and speak soon. Bye.